The first one is a general topic, just says, a bubble somewhere will pop. And I think what it's saying is, you know, things have gotten so good. And, uh, you know, that, that uh, something's going to have to change in 2018. I think just the fact they're talking about it means that uh, people are going to be a little bit, a little bit wary, but there's some group, just kind of like in the past, that are overextending themselves because things have gotten good. Right. Prices go up, and uh, sometimes margins go down, and uh, so there's a uh, there's some risk out there, kind of like the old uh, home mortgage thing back in uh, back in previous years, uh, and and uh, just something to keep keep in mind. People should recognize yeah. it's been uh, here's off, it's going to be it's been awfully good for an awfully long time yeah. now. So. Yeah, here's my recommendation, small business people. I help people calculate the risk all day long. Right, it's what I do. <laughs> And I'm here to tell you, you have to think about the worst case scenario, the what if. Mm -hmm. That's how you create an operating agreement. That's how you create a deal. Put the... Put things together on the worst case scenario. That is the best way to go, and you don't need to worry about this situation, which is going to happen. I just can't tell you where and what it's going to look like. So make sure as you're calculating the risk, you're not ignoring the low end of the spectrum of what this can be. And if you structure your business, you structure your relationships based on that, uh, it's going to be very helpful for you. And and you know the people out there listening to me right now that are saying that is correct our attorneys right now and accountants because a lot of times they don't see clients or clients don't call them until there's a problem, right? I'm saying please think about what the problem could be on the front end because it'll make that process a whole lot easier on the back end. And that's really what I, what, I, what I read into this one. You know, and I'll relate that to one of, the, one of the items which says you will get hacked, in other words, and, and hacking is, uh, I can remember back in my corporate days a long time ago, you know, uh, disaster recovery was always a topic because it's one of those things where you should always be prepared, but it's really tough to gas up and get prepared for it until it happens. And so what they're saying is you're going to get hacked. And so that's one of those risks you should probably uh, probably think about as you're uh, going in 2018. And you might just have Good to point. bite yeah. the bullet, spend the money, whatever it takes to uh, to protect yourself. The one that's kind of obvious, but it, it bears repeating, uh, is that millennials will get their say. That's why Chris is sitting at the table. Yeah, that's we right. have to let him. We, have, got no, we have to let somehow, him. Somehow Turn he's in charge. Off. <laughs> Some, somehow he's my boss. I don't know how that happened. I woke up, oh, I man. I woke up one it. day and you some little it. child is in charge. <laughs> How'd that happen, Wayne? I don't know. <laughs> probably because I left. You know, some, <laughs> Someone had to fill that vacuum. I think when, after Chris got about eight years old, he got smarter than you. Oh, yeah. You got oh, me there. That, that's just mean, oh. even though I'm not on the receiving end. That's just mean. That, but, that, it's that's just, that but it's accurate. But it's accurate. That really was It is mean. accurate. But you know, It's we, mean, but it is it's accurate. accurate. We talk about millennials a lot, but obviously the, the uh, longer we go, I mean, you're just going to have to market to them. But consistent with this, uh, the bubble's going to burst. Uh, millennials are notoriously anxious and cautious group. Does that define you, Chris? Anxious and cautious. Yeah, I can it. be anxious and cautious. He's, Definitely. He, is that. And, uh, he doesn't I'm, fit I'm into anxious, a lot of the millennials. Cautious, stuff. But, but also very patient. So it affects. <laughs> very patient. Well, that, that, that makes sense. It's like sense. jumbo shrimp. <laughs> You can be anxious and patient at the same time. <laughs> so anyway, so that influences how businesses are run, but it also influences how you how you sell your products and services. Is the and Wayne, the that's a great to. point. And that, and I was just reading a little bit um, further on this article, and it says, "What can you do about this?" And it's got a great statement, which is the best way to sell to millennium is to be honest and transparent. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably add one more thing, which is genuine. Chris and I get along so well because we're really genuine. I mean, when we speak to each other, we say, I don't know, you know. Or, I <laughs> or, don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> or, Joe, you're wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> stop with the bellman at 700 times today. Tinkle you're killing me. Tell you, nobody in this business can count. <laughs> not you, not the sales manager, nobody. But you're absolutely right with the genuineness and millennials today, and it's 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 the way even for older demographics, but they want to build a relationship with who they're doing business. They want that, what your buddy Chris would talk about, they want that experience. The experience is incredibly important. And it is to a lot of people. It's just exceptionally noted with that millennial demographic. I think it's like, like in our generation, Wayne, sooner or later we wanted to form a relationship 
before we would actually write the check. They won't even consider, because that's number one on their mm-hmm. priority. It might be like number four on our priority. That's kind of the difference, I think, what's happened. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, here's no, 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 no. You know what you want. Exactly. 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 I was trying to avoid that. <laughs> Uh, you just can't, Wayne. Now, a good example of something that Chris could probably talk a long time about, but uh, we probably don't have time, is that there are some technical buzzwords. One's uh, what's called IoT, the Internet of Things, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, uh, ML, which I forget just what that stands for. But uh, the point is there's a lot of um, technical tools, a lot of Internet tools and everything else that you know heretofore have been uh, out of reach for the small businesses. Remember, this is focused on small businesses. And it might just be the larger businesses that have been able to afford that, but that's slowly changing to where you're going to have – so you can buy the service or you can pay for it to do something. And, uh, and it's going to start you know, permeating small businesses as well. In fact, you'd better – you better use it. And uh, there's a later point here that uh, is related to, which is uh, customer targeting these days. Um, I mean, you've got all the tools if you use them to, you know, be right at the front door of the best person on earth. And you know, Wayne, product and service. This this reminds me of something you started talking about two years ago, which is membership and subscription based businesses. Mm-hmm. This is that on a big scale, but it's allowing us small business people to participate in something, this artificial intelligence and all of this stuff, that all of this would not be possible without some sort of membership or or subscription base. Chris, you want to say something? As Brian and I sat through a webinar on this very subject this week, and the, the webinar itself was terrible, but it, it encouraged us to, to go do some research on it. And the huge gift this year, or one of them, are the, uh, the, the Google – uh, home devices and the Alexas. I actually bought somebody an Alexa last night for a Christmas present, but that's huge, right? There's a great opportunity there coming to market there. And for anybody that's a little bit above the average in terms of technical savvy, you can go online for your small business and start building skills for the Alexa so that people can interact with you there. It's definitely it's worth the research, and it's it's within grasp of even the small business That's owner. That's exactly what they're talking about here. It's just you're, you're going to have to start using those, or you're going to be left in the dust. 